All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session of Market Playbook. Um, today, we're gonna to talk briefly about earnings and in the comments and consistently to our customer service team, we've had a lot of questions about trading iron condors and how they work, constructing them and so on and so forth. And if you attend our sessions with, with Tom Sosnoff, actually one of the ways that he likes to trade iron condors is around earnings. So I thought that I'd marry those both together and give you a presentation where we just talk briefly about earnings. I've got some examples of um, trading earnings with an iron condor, what to look for, the risks associated with it. And then of course, optimal environments and things of that nature. So I explain iron condors a little bit differently. So I'm excited to share that with you guys today. Um, but further ado, thank you so much for joining and you know, being committed to learning about options. It's cer certainly something that's really great and what we love about options play. And of course, as always, we'd love to hear where you're from. So just say hello and tell us where you are in the chat window. And I will be monitoring that throughout the session. And then I also, of course, have the wonderful Philip on the line as well, who will be helping with the chat session as well. All right, so as always, we have to start with a very brief disclaimer. Just know that there are securities forms and research tools that are just purely for demonstration purposes only. It's not considered a recommendation from options play. Our daily plays and daily trade ideas and things of that nature have some due diligence that they go for before that they should be traded as far as timing and closing and monitoring and things of that 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 sort. So I'm gonna pull lots of information, but know that um, I pulled them purely for example purposes and my normal due diligence was not done on these securities. So, so be aware of that, take it with a grain of salt. It's just gonna be really great examples from an educational perspective. All right, and, and from everywhere, I love that, it's great. So we're gonna to cover today, um, we can talk briefly about earnings season and what has happened. I don't have any slides prepared as far as from the market, but I'm happy to give you a very quick overview. I think that's certainly important with today's environment. Um, we will talk about the Greeks, actually. If you haven't watched our Greeks presentation, we'll make sure that it's linked. But I think that's important when talking about the risks associated with iron condors, how to put them together. So it's going to be just very, very briefly, we'll, we'll talk about talk about the Greeks. Um, then we'll go through understanding iron condors, what they're used for, um, optimal environments, just get that foundational educational piece solidified. Then we'll talk about earnings plays. I'm actually gonna use Tesla as an example because um, I already reported that way I've got some actual prices and we can see what happened and how you'd put that together based on versus theories and, and what actually happened. And then we'll talk about optimal option strategies. So I saw in the beginning, somebody wanted to talk about entry and exit points, we will cover that. And then I'll go over through the options play tool and show you how to monitor it as well. And then of course, if we have time, we'll have Q and A at the end. So with further ado, let's just talk about earnings for a very, very brief moment, because I think that's important, especially with the type of market that we're in. Now, a lot of the sessions that we've been doing, we've been focusing on bear markets or directional plays and how to capitalize on that as well as our daily plays. And this is a, a neutral strategy where you can profit if the security stays within a trading range. So I think this is a little different from our, our normal normal processes as of late, because we like to keep our education around what's happening with the market. Now, nonetheless, from an earnings perspective, what I think is really interesting is we are still seeing so many beats within earnings they are coming through except for the ones coming today but that's early on and we haven't had earnings or the next coming earnings have more of an international exposure which means that it's going to tell an interesting story because they have headwinds with a really strong dollar if your a lot of your revenue comes from overseas if you're trying to convert it back then that that means you actually have less revenue. So that's something it's going to be interesting to see what their profit margins look like. But what I find very interesting, what I've been looking for, at least from an earnings perspective, is healthy mar profit margins being sustained, which they are, but only through rising consumer prices that happened with um, Pepsi, a lot of the airlines. And so that tells me that inflation is still high because on the earnings calls and conference calls, CEOs and executives are telling us, yes, we're doing great, but our uh, we were able to rise our prices and the consumer is still spending. So I call it a tail of the strong consumer that will certainly fuel a rally. But if you think about the overall market, um, it 
goes up, the index goes up if stocks collectively go up in value and that occurs when they have really good um, earnings. So that resilient consumer, consumer can definitely fuel a strong bear market rally that we are now. Um, so nonetheless, that's a quick view on the earnings season and, and what to look for. And really, we're just trying to understand for guidance to see if demand destruction is there. And then in my personal view, I'm really looking at the labor market and the imbalance that I see in the labor, labor market because um, Fed Powell likes to put those two words together, labor market, imbalance, and restrictive policy. So I, I want to keep an eye out on that. All right, so into the bulk of the discussion talking about trading iron condors. Now you might've seen this screen before and I just wanna bring it up to get your, your mind into those individual legs and what they're intended for. And normally when we do um, multi-leg strategies, at least on the two-legged front, we start with a strategy driver. Now when you have a four-legged strategy, you still have a strategy driver, but it tends to be a multi-leg trade. Um, the iron condor can be viewed in two ways of which that, that driver is. Um, in my opinion, it's a short strangle, but we'll talk about that. So what I want you to take away, or it's very foundational and important for you to know, and know this is an advanced session, is if you are long an option, your, your goal is for it to go up in value as much as possible, which means that when you buy an option, we know that an extrinsic value component is that time value. So that time value is negative and works against us, but we are positive directional movement. So positive gamma. So we, we want a very sharp movement in, in whichever direction, depending if we're, we're buying a call or a put. And an increase in implied volatility makes the options premium more expensive, which will benefit those long options. And then the inverse is true for the short call and the short put. So those are sold, which means we do not want them to have any value whatsoever, which means time decay is positive because as time moves forward, that's going to allow us to buy those options back at a lower price. But really drastic stock movement is risk associated with these because they're not sharply bullish or, or very bearish. They're slightly, so neutral to bullish or neutral to bearish. So neutral to bullish on the short put side, neutral to bearish on the short call side. These are the strategy drivers of a... a um, credit put spread or a bull put spread. The addition of the long put just caps your risk potential. And then the inverse is true on the, the short call. That is the strategy driver of the bear call spread or a call credit spread, lots of names. Um, and the combination of those two is what makes an iron condor. So, and we'll, we'll talk about in a little more detail, but what I want you to know um, and the quick review I wanted, wanted to go through is one, delta is positive or negative if a strategy is bullish or bearish. So it's negative for the short call, positive for the short put. The, very simple there. Theta is positive if time value benefits us. Gamma is negative in both of these because a, an acceleration in movement can quickly turn into losses. Whereas when we are, are selling credits or selling options, we need something to remain the same. We normally have a range or a slightly directional bias of some sort. And then Vega is also negative because an increase in implied volatility makes the options premium go up, which hurts us as option sellers. However, that's something to think of and why why um, I think Todd Sassas does that when he trades earnings is selling condors or, or selling strangles, short strangles, because post earnings, you expect implied volatility to go down. So it's taking advantage of negative gamma and positive theta, if you will. All right, so let's start with the bull put spread. A bull put spread has a slight directional bias. It's neutral to bullish. So I have an example on the screen um, and what we can go through each of the Greeks as well, where you're just selling to open one XYZ 100 put collecting a $5 premium for that. And then we're buying to open one XYZ 90 put and, and I'm paying 150 for that. So the difference of those two gives us a established net credit for $3 and 50 cents. So the goal of this strategy is we have capped, we, we have, we want, we have capped upwards potential. So that's why it's slightly bullish because no matter how high 
the stock price goes. So that's depicted on this, this uh, profit and loss diagram here. That's how I know it's bullish by the way that this is viewed. No matter how high that this stock price goes, I am capped at the credit that I can receive of $3.50, which means if it's something largely directional, this isn't the right play. However, if I expect a decrease in implied volatility um, or, or little to no move to, to some movement to the upside, then I would sell a bull put spread. That makes perfect sense. And then the only reason that I buy this 90 put, so a less valuable put, is simply to hedge my downside loss potential. That's simply all it is. So individually, a bull put spread is bullish, which means it has a positive delta, a positive theta because it's sold all together. And all of the Greeks are based off of um, this, this sold strategy being at, at the money because that does shift and we can talk about that as well. Um, but on entry, this is what you're going for, and that's important to know. So if you're looking at the Greeks as a mean of strike selection, rather than other factors like standard deviations and things of that nature, you, for a bull put spread, want a positive delta. We want positive theta because you sold it. You want to make sure that that's in your favor. Gamma is going to be negative. If you shift that, you have a completely different strategy. And um, same with Vega being negative as well. Um, and we'll actually cover one on a, not, not zero DTE, but it's about three DTE and we can go over that as well. Um, but that's a good question. So we'll hold on to that. All right. So very important that you understand a bull put spread before we even talk about an iron condor. So if that does make sense for you, please type one in the chat for me. So I can make sure that that is abundantly clear. Just the bull put spread. We simply just need the underlying and this scenario to be one penny above 100 and we are profitable. And if XYZ goes well beyond um, 100, we are still profitable. Risk is upside potential in that scenario. So many ones, perfect. All right, so let's talk about the other side, which is a bear call spread. So this is literally the inverse. So we are neutral to bearish. Our delta is negative because it is a slightly bearish strategy. So we benefit if the security goes down. And if it does go all the way down, then we will we will be capped at our max profit of 350. So in this case, the valuable option, the most valuable option is the 110. So because the right to buy at 110 is much more valuable than the right to buy at 120, which is why it's also more expensive. It's a great way to even hone in on the strategy driver is just by finding the most expensive option. And that, that, that's a good way to wrap your head around that. Um, same scenario here, just the inverse. If I am establishing at my net credit of 350, that's the max that I can gain no matter how low XYZ goes beyond 110. So the same is true there, but now what we're gonna look at is how we formulate a condor from there. And remember that it's the, an iron condor is a neutral strategy. And that's why I'm bringing up the Greeks to see how we can adjust it. And you can also move your strike prices based on those that those Greeks as well, which is extremely important. And this copy of the slides will be sent out via email probably about 24 to 48 hours after max. All right, so let's look at the iron condor. I love showing the profit and loss slides and then putting them together. Um, I think it's a great visualization of what it looks like. So this is simply the bull put spread. So we are profitable no matter how far the underlying security goes above. But now what we're doing is we're adding another layer of that because remember that the, the um, bull put spread it has a capped profit potential no matter how high it can go. And is it going to go to an infinitely high price? Sure, some securities can drastically move, but if that's the case, then I am not going to be a seller because it's more profitable for me to be a buyer in that scenario. So the differences of, of buying versus selling um, also inclusive of how you feel the security is going to move. Adding on the call, you're profitable if it's just below a specified price. So what we've done is we've basically added on to 
our premium. So now we have $7 total instead of that 350 before. We actually widened our break even component, meaning that premium that we received. Sorry, I'm laughing. I see my dog in the background. I normally never catch this. Um, the, but the premium is widened, meaning our break even point on the, the bull put spread alone means if this moves lower than our strike price, less the premium that we received. But now we're adding more premium. And so that also reduces risk. But we are now narrowing movement to be profitable. So that's the risk versus reward. That's important to know. Um, but all an iron condor is, is a bull put spread with a bull call spread put together. That's, that's simply it. Um, you do have to have the call spread at higher strikes than the put spread. That affects your margin requirement. And that's the only way that it will be paired. So that's extremely, extremely important. Um, but what you do when you combine these together is you remove directional bias because these deltas generally are going to about cancel each other out. Now you could have some slight directional bias. if These aren't exactly equidistant from the at the money or wherever you're specifying those, but you are making it where you're profitable if the security just moves within a range, which is in between your short strikes. So 100 and 110. The purpose of the 90 and the 120 call, just like they are in the individual spreads, is just to mitigate risk. All right. And then these are just magnified. And that's important, and that's going to answer a lot of the questions I see coming in in the chat, but I will answer them directly as well. Theta is magnified, meaning there is more benefit from theta decay because we have more premium. Logical. Gamma is also magnified, which is risk of the underlying security having a, a high acceleration or velocity because gamma tells us how much delta is going to move. And so if gamma is very high, that means delta is going to move quite a bit, and that could hurt us if we get to the edge of the, the wings, if you will. Um, and then vega, of course, is magnified as well. So we can capitalize on a decrease in implied volatility, but if there's an increase in implied volatility, this will make it more expensive. So you're making things a little more negative or a little more positive, but um, that's why it's optimal to choose your right environments. Now, as far as those zero DTE expirations where these can be quite profitable from, your risk is very elevated in those scenarios. And that's because of that magnified gamma. So you probably hear gamma risk often from so many people who trade spreads, condors, anything that you're selling. And that's because that risk is associated with it. So when we're selling, we wanna capitalize if you have zero DTE, you're missing out on that just decay that naturally happens. And so while yes, that can be profitable, you've just increased your gamma risk so very much. Whereas that, um, I don't wanna use the word gambling, but it, it, it turns into that because you are, um, you're requiring a short amount of time to be profitable and you are giving up any theta decay that's already there. And if you would have allowed some time for theta decay, that would have given you more chance to be profitable. So that's that's why I I, I stay away from those. Those are you're, you're gambling at that point, which can 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 um, be profitable, but it's difficult on days that are highly volatile like this type of market to do a trade like that. All right, so let's talk in a little more detail and what, what brings iron condors together. So first of all, the criteria that I'm looking for is one market neutral, and then we'll go through options play and I'll show you how to actually pull some of the screeners for the, for the best views, is short iron condors, they don't have a directional bias. So if you feel that there is a security that is going to have extreme directional potential or has a high beta, that's not a good candidate. But if there's a security 
that doesn't move very much or has a low beta. So beta just means moves more or less than the market. Beta of one means with the market. If it has a beta less than one, then it doesn't move as much as the market. So there's a high vol volatile times. If you find a security with a lower beta, then you have less chance of that gamma risk or that directional move that will quickly make you unprofitable. It is defined risk. So that means if you are used to trading, um, having a directional bias on a security and you do, you're purely a credit, credit trader and you do bull put spreads or, or bear call spreads, if you just combine these together, there's actually no additional margin requirements. It's the same because if, if you think about it, the underlying security can only go in one direction, which means it's impossible for those margin requirements on both sides to kick in at the same time because of that, that reasoning. Um, and then what you want to seek is range bound securities because you want that security to remain in between your selected strike prices. And that's securities with really strong resistance and support zones. So if you find that on a chart where it's like a ball to ceiling and it just never seems to cave, that is a great candidate because every time it it hits its resistance and, and comes down and same with the support. Instead of choosing a directional bias at that time, you can choose a condor at that time and that's strengthened every time that occurs. And while that is occurring, that theta decay is going to work for you. So range bound securities are honestly the best candidate for that. And because we benefit from a collapse in implied volatility and theta decay, then we can look for securities that have higher implied volatility or a higher IV rank. Um, earnings is up to you. We'll, we'll, I will go through what happened with Tesla and let, let you know. Um, but yeah, so let's go through that. All right. So let's talk about the earnings play and how to do that. So if, um, and I've, you can have a, a yes or no in the chat for this one, but I don't know if anyone has uh, ever plotted an implied move or know what this means that I'm showing on the screen, but um, in at the money straddle with the closest expiration, this is the way that we would plot an implied move. So when, when Tony does options action and we say, oh, this is the implied move of the, the security, this is the base calculation where it comes from. Um, and so that's the implied move that's showed on Tastyworks platforms. This is the the root of that calculation, if you will. And if you think about the way that extrinsic value or theta decay works, theta is centered around at the money options. That's where it's higher. And as you go, if you were to pull up a physical option chain, theta is less the deeper in the money and the farther out of the money it is. So that's going to give you the the extrinsic value. And a common misconception, theta doesn't just mean time decay, it means extrinsic value decay. So that's where it's centered, which means you can pull, uh, DTE stands for days until expiration. So this is Tesla yesterday. I pulled the closest contracts till expiration, which is tomorrow. So this is the at the money straddle, which is just a long call and a long put closest to the underlying strike price with the less expiration as possible. So this was as close as I could get to zero DTE. Those were pricing at about $10 each. And what that tells me is a, a straddle is very profitable or only profitable if the underlying moves more than the premium paid on either direction. So for 222, I would need it to move above um, 232 and then beyond. So that that's in either, either I'm sorry, I said that, 242, it's 20 altogether, um, or 202 for it to be profitable because I'm paying for both of those. So you have to combine your debits. That's what this represents. So this is $20 and this is $20. And that is a huge, huge move, but that's called the implied move. So that would be a move of, so if before Tesla reported, someone says, oh, what, where are they gonna move at it? We, I would do this calculation and say, it's gonna move about $20 and four cents, which represents about a 9% move. So that is how 
um, one would play earnings or the common way to play earnings. Again, I do recommend against this because it's still really risky, but I will let you know at least the proper way to do it. Um, so what would happen is you use that implied move to define your strike prices because the options are telling us it's going to move 9% in either direction. So let's plot that 9% or that $20 move from its current price to give us our range. Because something happens right after earnings reports, which is implied volatility collapses. And that can benefit us as an option seller. And we can define a range because we can specify what that range may be by understanding the implied move from a straddle. So you can do this in options play with any security. I'll show you how to pull the, the um, securities with earnings. You just bring it into a straddle. Exactly what it's priced is the implied move. This is now, um, the implied move is calculated. It's literally, so the, the cost of this option, of the call was $10.04. The cost of the put was $10. Those added together equals 20, 04, 2004 divided into the price of Tesla at the time that that was priced or the closing prices is what these were. Um, that equals a 9% move. And that's because of the extreme implied volatility. Um, you have to do an at the money strike. You don't just select any strikes. These strikes are the closest strikes to the strike price. This is, if you do this trade, you will, we call it volatility crush because it immediately collapses, which I'm, I'm about to show you. So um, you plot that 9% move or $20 to the upside, that gives us 242 and a half. So that's our call and that's giving us $2 and 95 cents. So it's still, that's, that's a, a large premium for two days left until expiration. Um, and remember with the bear call spread, we need the security to be just below. So if it hits just one penny below, we're still at max profit. So that's gonna define our, our upwards range. Then we take the put spread and that gives us our, our bottom range. So if Tesla were to miss, which they did, that's $20.04 lower or 9.02% lower, puts us at 202.50, that was at 308. Um, so that is a slight directional bias because that's more expensive to the put side. So that is an indication right there that they might have missed because puts are more elevated because of the fear and there's lots of things to go with that. Um, and then of course, these, what you buy your options at, notice how these aren't 40 points in between, meaning I didn't go, um, down into the, the um, 160s because that doesn't make sense um, because that is a large amount of risk. Because remember the purpose of buying options on either side of the short calls is to mitigate risk if it moves too high or moves too low because we specified a range and if it moves beyond that range, that, that's when we can start losing money. So having, and that's where you have to think about risk versus reward, having the ability or the net altogether, so I think is, um. 250, but we'll go through that. But making $250 max profit for air, that, that amount of risk doesn't make any sense. So that's why these are, are pulled together just to at least get risk versus reward skewed in my favor. So the risk in this is 750, which is just the difference of those strikes less the premium received. That is my max risk, which is a little more favorable than, than moving it. So that's how you would establish your long options on either side. So you just want it to be directly above 202 and a half, so a 20 or 9% move downwards, or directly below 242 and a half, which is a 20% move upwards. So this is your sweet spot. It's right here. And we gave us a that's a that's a big range. It's $40 of movement we are allowing. So always establish out of net credit. So I said about 250, so 249. Now let's see what happens. So Tesla, they did not do well, but interestingly enough, that's why I love the straddles. They do a really great job of, of saying how much something is going to move because options are um, really, really 
heavily utilized. So it's important that if you do use this to see an implied move, there needs to be a lot of liquidity with those options as well. So look for something very liquid on the options play tool, just to get you an indication of, of how much a security is going to move. And that's purely based on that, because think about implied volatility. The definition of that is the market's anticipated movement of the underlying security. So if the market's anticipated movement of an underlying security is heightened, then we're just measuring what that is and not giving it a directional side. That can help give you the move. So Tesla, the day low was 202, which is a move of 2013, which is 906. So it did a great job. However, um, this is where these are just so risky in my opinion, because when I'm not accounting for theta decay whatsoever, um, and I didn't utilize technical analysis for those range bounds, which means getting risk reward to be skewed in my favor is going to be very, very difficult. And this is, a, it is a way to trade earnings, but this is only done with very short expirations and it is extremely risky, but this is asked for. So I wanna make sure that we cover it. Here is the result of this trade. So if you would have closed this today around noon, you would have closed it at a net debit of 96 cents, which you would have gained $153 total because we originally collected $2.49. Um, so then the difference of 249.96 gives us 153 times 100, 153 total. So you would have you would have you would have made money in this scenario. Just again, think about that that risk versus reward. All right, and let's talk about what and when, and then I'm gonna pull up the platform and I've got a couple that, that make more sense that aren't necessarily within earnings or if you wanna utilize earnings and that implied move, um, and I'll show you how to do that as well, um, what to look for so we can amplify that. Because again, we want something range bound. So trading iron condors, what and when? We are neutral. We want something that is stuck within a range, said that over and over and that we expect to decrease in volatility. So um, for example, when Elon Musk was tweeting a lot, Twitter had the most heightened volatility, but then it got in a predictable trading range. And so that's something to capitalize on, but that's also a risk because that we don't know when that volatility will collapse. With the earnings, we do know when that volatility will collapse, but searching for high implied volatility is an opportunity with these type of trades or when you're selling and what would the way I would choose of doing a bull put spread or a bull call spread versus a short iron condor is purely my directional view. Am I bullish, bearish, or neutral? Then that just decides which one. Um, for for the range bound, the way that you would select your strikes optimally is selling that call at that resistance level because that's your your top level. Selling the put at the support level, and then you add to find risk on either side. So here's an example with equidistant strikes and premiums, know that whenever we give you premiums, they're real securities, they're just normalized, so you have actual prices. Um, the setup is you do wanna look for 30 to 45 days. That's because theta is going to decay and that accelerates within 14 to 21 days. So you just wanna make sure you give us some time to experience that theta decay because it's gonna help you. Um, all right, and then, for your strike prices, you're selling the out of the money options, normally about a 0.2 delta, and then you're buying further out of the money. So that's a, a 0.1, you can adjust accordingly. But remember, your purpose or your intent is for the entire strategy to expire worthless, which is more likely to occur with lower deltas. But um, your wings have to be the lowest of deltas, and the lower the delta, the less the premium. So the sweet spot is 0.2 to 0.1. Um, your expert tip here is you want implied volatility to be high. So just looking at implied volatility is never never a good measure. However, if an IV percentile is over 50, then that gives me an indication that that security has heightened implied volatility. So therefore we can utilize that. And then I try to give you a different visual of where we want the movement to be. So bear with me as I, I play around with presentations. Um, is your max profit is just within 100 to 110. Um, I did see someone ask about the, the break-evens and such there. That's what I like to call the risk-free range. That occurs here at 94. 
and 116. So I sold this for 10 and bought this for four. So that is six. So that's the difference there. Um, so that I break even if it's at 116 or 94, you have break evens on either side because remember this is risk that can occur in either direction. And then max loss is capped if the security moves above 120 or below 190. Doesn't matter how far you are capped at your, your loss potential at that moment. Um, and then these are just the options plays best practices. Um, so taking profit when it's 75% of the premium. So when it's trading at 150, take a loss at, at, at 10, and that can adjust depending where the security goes. Um, and then consider rolling where when it's 14 to 21 DTE, because if it's in your sweet spot and you've experienced that theta decay, then you can, you can move it out more just to make sure that you're capitalizing on that. All right. And then the rule of thumb for for choosing those optimal securities is a lot of back testing. So these are pulled um, from the optimal securities for short strengths. All right, so I am gonna pause this here and then I'll pull up the options play platform because there's a lot of information that I wanna show you on how to utilize this, especially to plot those straddles and how to view iron condors and find ideas because there's actually some good watch lists in there for that. But if you're not an options play member, I do want you to know that um, the platform is built to help you find and manage trades. There's a lot of really great details that I'm about to show you. Um, and we also really, really focus on education. Our, our goal is literally to make sure that you understand the market and all of its intricate details, know options really, really well, and then apply those skills with our platform so you can optimize your trading process. And then of course, gain market direction with, with Rick Bensignor, our chief market strategist. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and I'll pull up the platform because I do have a couple of examples saved, but my mouse is not going to be And I do have to re-log in. All right, I will just show you what I built before. All right. So here is the options play tool. It's over here. So what if you have logged in and there are a couple, your trade ideas that you can kind of filter through is found on the watch list. So there is one thing that I would just keep my eye out for period is anything that has this yellow bar because that means it's neutral and it's stuck in a trading range, which means it's optimal for this type of environment. Now on here, there are a lot of ways that you can pull ideas from the watch list view sectors, um, strangle straddles. So I would start with strangles because that's the type of strategy that this is. A strangle is just a short call and a short put. We're making it a condor by adding the risk mitigation, which is the long call and the long put on either side. So this is a great place to get some ideas. Um, I would look for something again with that yellow line, because that tells me that the, the um, security is neutral and it's stuck in a trading range. So I want to find something in a good trading range and that can help me define my wings. That's a little too wide for me. Um, or even here, that gap up or gap down, I, I would move on. Um, but that's how I would start is I, I, this anything on the income side is already filtering for a higher IV rank. So it's taking that work out. And then it's also looking for something that, that could be neutral or fit into those territories. So this is where you start finding your ideas. Um, there is also the high IV for upcoming earnings. You can also find securities here. And again, I would look for something in the um, yellow. And yeah, this is a better trading range. So you can see how it's got um, a stronger support here and 
resistance there. So that 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 to me is is a strength and sideways zone. So this is something I would start with. Um, you do have to adjust these, but I'll certainly show you how to do that. So you can just modify any trade. And these are the type, all of the strategies that you can pull. So there are just so, so many. Um, this is in here as a short iron condor or towards the top. Probably right in front of me. It's this. All right. And then you can modify from there. But what's great about this and what I really like. Um, about utilizing the tool to adjust, but also from a teaching mechanism is adjusting implied volatility expectations and price movement. And that can give you a great indication of what will actually happen and compare and contrast. So for example, I put in my short iron condor, it's giving me a 70 to 75. So 70 tour. So it's, it's putting this based on where it should be on the bottom of the trading range and the upper bounds of the trading range. But if you want to adjust it, you certainly can. That's not truly delta neutral because of that. Um, so this is where you can make your adjustments. So perhaps I want to do a 65, make this a 60, um, 75, do 80. Actually, let's make this a 55 and we can do an 85. So I'll also tell you what, what this tool is showing you, which I think is very, very helpful, is these lines are a standard deviation. It's not a break-even point. That's when they, the lines intersect is where your break-even point. But that's a helpful way of choosing strike prices. So now we've layered on three, three tools to find an optimal strategy. Number one is something with high implied volatility, because that means options are expensive and I want to sell. So that is something we can find from watch lists that prioritize high implied volatility. And we can verify that with IV rank, which is found here. Then I've ensured that this is in a neutral trading range, which matches my sentiment of the, of, of the strategy. So I want my underlying sentiment to match the strategy goal. I see a clear defined trading range. So I've verified that from a technical perspective. Um, so now I've just moved it to about a 65 to a 75. And that, that to me looks like it may stay within that area. And then we adjusted from there so, and I can compare and contrast, but the other aspect of that and the layer that we added is if you notice when you adjust your strike prices, we give you the Delta, but then we also show you a standard deviation. So that happens here. So, and standard deviations are, um, found in a lot of indicators, just it, it's helpful. <laughs> All right. And then I would definitely want to change this off the, to the midpoint because it told me that it's somewhat liquid. So when I'm pricing something, I always want to look at it at the midpoint. So this is how I would look and adjust. You can make three more iron condors over here. If you want to look at something with a less state, actually, we should even do that. Um, let's go ahead and add the same. Again, it's probably right in front of me. And we did a 65 and a 55 and 85. Okay. And let's just make this. Well, that's not giving us enough premium, but there we go. That's this is. Um, it's not that much. So this puts us out to November 18th. This probably wasn't a good example because I gave us 30 days. or something. we had 14 days or something like that. But this is where this isn't worth it because a max reward is very, very minimal. Um, and these are illiquid options. That's why they're irrationally pricing. So maybe if you look at something like SPX or something like that, that has heightened volatility, sure, you could look at that. But then you'd have to find something so close to the strike price, your likelihood of being wrong is astronomically high. Um, it's hoping that give us a little bit of a better example. But still, we can use 30 days and compare it to the 60 days because that's still double. And then we could also compare even just a, uh, a short straddle. So we'll just do sell and let's make this the put and we can do um, five. Oh, I'm doing that wrong. Yeah. All right. 
So that's definitely going to get us more, but nonetheless. I'll tilt it again. Why is this still flipping? All right, we're going to ignore this one. OK, so now what I can do is go to this PL simulator, and I can see what happens when the stock goes to specified prices and what my max loss may be. And that's what I think is important here. So this has unlimited loss, or excuse me, this one would have unlimited loss potential. Um, but utilizing the trade, the trading range simulator, that's where I go to PL simulator right here. And I want to see what happens if the security moves drastically in either direction and what my loss potential would look like. And what you can see is my loss potential is actually greater for the short, the shorter dated option if it moves beyond my strike price by expiration. And that makes sense because I have less theta decay within that strategy. And the same is true with implied volatility. This will also, this is worst case scenario, um, will, will hurt the option. So this is a great tool just to understand what will happen. So as this collapses, we should see profit increase. As long as we have this in the sweet spot and then what will happen before or after expiration. So this is a great tool just to understand what happens and base it on how we feel about the underlying security. That's how I would utilize this to compare and contrast. And that's what this was literally designed for. This section right here is so you can understand, okay, do I wanna do 30 days versus 60 days? What's the best case scenario? And then go from there. All right, okay. And then that puts us at time. So I will open it up for about five minutes for questions. So feel free to put those in the chat window or the Q&A and I'll try to go through those and answer those. All right. So when would you put on the iron condor? How many days, weeks before the earnings? So that's where I honestly would try to avoid earnings because earnings means that there's going to be a large movement in either direction. Um, and it equates to that, that, that gamma risk. And that's when we specified that this is not directional. It's when you feel like something is stuck in a trading range and the catalyst that tends to move securities outside of their trading range is earnings. That's when they break support or they break resistance. Um, so I would try to avoid those um, if they're, meaning I wouldn't have earnings within my expiration period excuse me, and if it organically falls within my expiration period, it's because I'm trading it for another reason. And that earnings is, is either right at that expiration date, which means I don't intend to hold it that long anyways, or just really, really close towards the end of that expiration cycle. Um, all right, difference between the long versus the short con condor. Um, completely inverse you're just buying and you want directional movement. So almost like the, the, the straddle, you want directional movement from either side. When you have a long strangle, you're widening your directional movement, which is less premium. So it almost ends up being exact same movement. So now you just profit from movement on either side, but you cap your profit potential. So it's a little more directional, but you widen where your movement is and the inverse is true if it's in between your strikes, then you actually are at max loss where max gain occurs on the wings. That's a difference. Preference strangles or iron condors. Um, my preference is condors because a strangle includes a short call, which means it has unlimited risk potential. And short calls also have much higher margin requirements. So about 25% of the underlying. So you can also reduce um, reduce how much capital is set aside 
to even trade that. So I, I would rather cap my risk potential just in case still skew risk reward versus your favor. Um, but that, that to me is personal preference. And then the presentation always can be replayed later. We always put it on our YouTube channel. There'll be a link to the slides on our YouTube channel. And if you registered for this, then it will also be sent to you via email. And then there's a couple more. Um, premium that you're targeting. So it follows the same rules that we provide for best practices for um, credit spreads in general. You want a three to one. So it's not, I want a set amount of premium. It's how much premium am I receiving in comparison to the risk that I'm taking on? So we just look to skew risk versus reward in our favor. So when you're buying, normally the amount that you buy, because it's largely directional, you want to be able to make at least three times that. And then the inverse occurs when you're selling, but that's because it's the, uh, the directional movement required. Um, why loss potential is greater on the short-term iron condor? That's because you're not accounting for theta time decay. So as an option nears expiration, it loses its time value. So if you purchase something that has zero days until expiration, it has zero time value. And as an option seller, I can just sit there and profit from that. That's that. And so I'm taking away profitability from theta decay. And if I'm going to be directional, there's a better way to trade that. And that's not with, with condors. The portfolio tab in my options play account. So that one's great. And I, I love that question. You can utilize it actually for paper trading, or you can use the trades that you have within your brokerage firm and pull those in as well. So on the portfolio tab, you can just implement a trade. So say you want to try an iron condor, but you're not ready to pull the trigger. Best way to learn is getting some skin in the game. And this is the closest way you can do that. So you can um, just add it to your portfolio, see what happens. The prices will adjust just like it would be in your positions list on your brokerage firm. But it's a great way just to, to monitor trades that you have on if you have various brokerage firms into one singular location or to paper trade. How many years have I been doing this? That is a fun question. Um, uh, since 2009, so coming close to 15. All right, and I think we answered most of these throughout. All right, so I will we'll call it there. Thank you so much again for, for joining today's session. If you guys have any other sessions that you want us to cover, like I said, this one was heavily, heavily in the comments. So please feel free to, to either comment here, send an email to info at optionsplay.com. You can also, um, comment on the YouTube channel. We check those as well, but just let us know what type of sessions that you want. We formulate those for you. So please let us know butterfly trades. I like that one. Thank you. Um, trading small accounts. We can do that too. All right. Well, thank you everyone. And like I said, if you're not an options play mentor, member, it's a free trial. We definitely encourage you to try it out and thank you again and have a wonderful day and a great week.